Greetings, everyone. Craig Hester here with R2AWatches.com, and thank you for joining us today as we continue on our journey through all the watches that are at R2AWatches.com. Today, we are talking about the new, relatively new, compact Expedition North Pole watches from Vostok Europe. If you are watching this on YouTube, be sure and hit like and subscribe so that you can get updates when we post a new video, which we're doing pretty aggressively now, regularly posting videos, so you want to get those notifications. If you are watching this on Facebook, be sure and join the group Vostok Europe Timepieces, or VET. That is a closed group, so you do have to ask to join and answer a few questions, but it is the best place to connect with other fans of all the watches at r2awatches.com, so you don't want to miss out on that. So, like I said, today we are talking about the Vostok Europe Expedition North Pole, the newest model from that collection, I believe. I'm not sure if the Expedition Underground Everest came out before, although technically the Expedition Underground Everest is a different model altogether, being referred to as the Underground Everest as opposed to the Expedition North Pole, and I'll explain that a little bit later. Um, but the Expedition Collection from Vostok Europe. If you are not familiar with Vostok Europe, I'm going to give you the brief introduction that I usually do in these videos. Vostok Europe is a boutique watch brand based in Vilnius, Lithuania. They're about 15 years old and they produce between 35,000 and 40,000 watches a year, putting them firmly in the boutique watch category, which by the way, I'm going to talk a, lot, a little bit more towards the end of this particular video, what that means to be a boutique watch brand as opposed to some other definitions of watches. Um, every watch is 100% designed and hand assembled at their facility in Vilnius. They have seven full time watchmakers that hand assemble every watch there. They have their own in house designers. There is nothing about Vostok Europe that's off the shelf. I like to compare it to a bespoke tailored suit. Uh, I can go to a department store and I can buy a suit off the rack that has my size and will probably fit okay, or I can have a custom tailored suit made that's going to fit me perfectly. Everything that Vostok Europe does is 100% custom. Um, so we've been involved with Vostok Europe pretty much since the beginning. We are their North American distributors. That means that we cover Vostok Europe in the U.S., Canada, and the Caribbean. And R2AWatches.com is definitely one of your homes for Vostok Europe watches in North America. Although they, all, although they are available at other retailers uh, within North America. So as I said, today we are talking about the Expedition North Pole 1, what Vostok Europe is now calling the Compact Edition. Now, some of you may find that a little funny because this is actually, well, this is a good time to double check it. I like to bring out my little caliper, zero it out, and then check the actual size of the watches that we're talking about when we do the shows. In this case, we are at almost 43 millimeter. Vostok Europe refers to this as a 43 millimeter. The caliper here is showing me 40, well, right at 43. They're very sensitive because of the 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 the, uh, the fineness of the of the measuring you're doing here it can it can change a great deal just by how i were to move it around on the case but you're looking at a 43 millimeter case in terms of how it is actually stated and then it's about 16 millimeters thick again depending upon this is a curved crystal depending upon where you're measuring against the crystal you're at roughly 16 millimeters thick so compared to other Vostok Europe watches, this is actually would be on the small side. Um, you really have to get into the dress watches that Vostok Europe makes to get into anything in the 43, 42, 43, 44 millimeter uh, case size. Uh, Vostok Europe definitely um, has over the years moved into the category of larger aggressive sport watches like many watches did as large watches became popular. And the reason I say it's kind of funny that people would say, um, calling 43 millimeter is is a little bit uh, uh, funny is because there was a time that a 43 millimeter watch would absolutely not have been considered a small watch. Um, but by today's standards, with certainly watches that are out there even well above 50 millimeters, 43 is certainly no mean, by no means a large watch anymore. Uh, let me show you the colors that we're talking about here, um, kind of bouncing around in no particular order of things. But we do have three watches that we're showing from the Compact Expedition North Pole collection today. That uh, is only three of of the collection. These are three with the NH35 automatic mechanical movement in them. There are also VK64 Mecha Quartz options available, which we'll cover in another video at another time. I pulled these three. First of all, this is the blue, kind of a lilac blue, which I know is not really a masculine term to use, uh, but it is an interesting 
blue. It is it is certainly more in a pastel category. This is a blue I've never seen Vostok Europe use before, and it makes for a quite interesting execution color-wise. And then we have two that are the same color in terms of the dial uh, and the stadium chapter ring inside, uh, but they are actually quite different in the fact that this is one of those watches where the PVD plating really does have a significant impact on the look of the watch. Um, these both actually do have the same exact dial color configuration, which one of the things I love that Vostok Europe did here, it's not a sunray dial, but as you can see, the color does actually it's lighter in the center and it gets darker as it moves out to the edge of the bezel until it becomes almost black or certainly a deep charcoal on this ch chapter ring. Um, in this particular watch, the PVD black really darkens the overall look of the watch. This is a much brighter looking watch than this. Sometimes PVD black doesn't really have that big of a change on the overall look. Um, they, the stainless can look quite similar to the PVD, but in this case, I think you would agree that it really does make this a much darker, more stealthy looking watch. Um, as I mentioned before, 43 millimeter case size, 15 millimeters thick. Uh, it does have the etching on the case back, which speaks to the inspiration. And as I've mentioned many, many times before, every Vostok Europe does have a story. In the case of this particular model, the story is the Expedition North Pole 1, which was a floating ice station that the Soviets, in fact, the Soviet Union wasn't really that old at the time that this happened. This was in 1937, and the Soviet Union was formed in 1922, that the Soviet Union launched about 12 kilometers from the North Pole. It was on, it was a broken off ice flow that then floated along for roughly nine months, went about 2,800 kilometers, and then was picked up by the first ever Russian icebreaker, the Yermak. Um, and it was a largely scientific expedition. Of course, nothing the Soviet Union did was 100% scientific during those days, but it was a largely scientific exp expedition that actually holds several uh, records and um, um, really was an amazing feat for its time. And that is the inspiration for this. You can see on the case back, again, I love Vostok Europe's case back work, uh, the picture of the tent with the flag and the gentlemen who were part of the Otto Schmidt and his team who were a part of the expedition North Pole 1. Uh, and this is, this is commemorating that on the back. The name expedition has actually been a big part of Vostok Europe from the very beginning. Um, some of the very first Vostok Europe watches were named Expedition. In that case, they were called the Expedition either Trophy or Around the World. It was a race that lasted a few years during the early 2000s. Um, the first one was a race, all, an off-road race, all the way across uh, Russia. Um, and then after uh, they finished, uh, they did an expedition around the world. Um, and then the that when that race... Um, came to a conclusion, uh, Vostok Europe moved over to the story of the Expedition North Pole 1. Um, and as I mentioned now, there is the Expedition Underground Everest, which is based on the event from five or six years ago when a group of, um, when a group of Lithuanian spelunkers actually went to the bottom of the world at the Krubera Cave, it, which is in Georgia, the country, not the state. And they broke the world record for the deepest cave dive, a group of speologists. And at the time, they were wearing Vostok Europe watches. And since then, there has been an expedition underground Everest, uh, which, by the way, we were a big part of developing that story with Vostok Europe, which I'm quite proud to say. Um, the expedition underground Everest edition, which came out within the past few months. Uh, so expedition, the, the name expedition, the history of expeditions, either uh, driving or scientific and uh, floating on the ice or going to the deepest cave in the world has been a big part of the Vostok Europe story from the very beginning. It's quite fitting given that Vostok Europe's uh, slogan is for going to extremes and they build extreme sport related watches that the term expedition would be uh, really ingrained into the history and development of, of Vostok Europe watches. Um, a couple of other things about this model. This is 200 meter water resistant, so it does still fall into the category of a professional grade dive watch. Now, it does only fall into that category in terms of having the actual water resistance level. If it is going to be a true professional grade dive watch, it really would have a unidirectional rotating bezel like the Expedition Underground Everest does. Um, but for a number of reasons, not the least of which just to have something that looked different in their collection, uh, the Expeditions uh, prior to the Underground Everest have all had a fixed bezel. Um, some For one reason, that does make it a less expensive watch. It does cost a lot more to produce 
a watch with a rotating bezel, not surprisingly, uh, than it does to, to, to produce with a fixed case. So this keeps this as really the entry level sport watch for Vostok Europe by having that. It also creates really clean, simple lines. There's a reason that the Expedition case has always been so popular among Vostok Europe collection collectors. It is the cleanest, simplest, most straightforward case design probably outside of maybe the gas limo that Vostok Europe creates. And in this case, I want to make sure that I consider that I'm saying to you that I consider simple to be a compliment. Uh, sometimes when you say something is simple, you actually uh, could be arguing that you're making a diminishment of it. No, in this case, I think that this, these are just these really clean, straight lines that make for a beautiful case to wear on the wrist. But it does have some interesting elements to it that make it more than just your, you know, it doesn't look like every other watch, I guess, is what I'm about trying to get to um, in that it isn't a truly just classic, simple, round watch actually far more like the, the, the original gas limos are. Um, you do have the cuts in the case. You have the lift of the bezel above the lower case. Um, you have the, the way that the crown is etched along the sides of the case back with the decoration. Um, so it is simple, but it is simple in a non boring way, I guess, for want of a better way of putting it. Um, so getting back to size, Vostok Europe is aware, obviously, that the market is changing. Um, there are a lot of people who are going back to what I would classify as more traditional sized watches. I do not believe that there is a right size for a watch. Um, I think that is up to the buyer and up to the wearer and the collector. Um, it's all about what you prefer. I still very much enjoy wearing uh, larger timepieces and particularly, yeah, I think everyone knows that my favorite of the Vostok Europe collection is the Energia, which is by no means a small watch, both in terms of width and height. Um, but there are a lot of people out there who are moving back towards, or never left for that matter, uh, more traditional sizes. By the way, speaking of how it looks on the wrist, I am wearing the blue on my wrist right now. Um, I actually don't have a really big wrist, even though I do like wearing the larger watches. I have about a seven and a half inch wrist, but which is certainly, I'd say, a little bit below average for a man's wrist. I'd say eight is probably more the average. Um, so this actually really fits me quite well. That said, because I do have a relatively flat, uh, wide wrist across here, but those of you who really want to get into my anatomy, um, I can get away with wearing the larger watches that, that some people can't um, who have smaller wrists. Um, but anyway, the 43 is really a good fit on this. Also, because of the fact that the dial runs all the way to the edge of the case, as opposed to having a, a bezel on it, that makes this watch wear bigger than it is in terms of the look on the wrist. Always they look bigger when you have the dial run to the edge of the case back. And in both of these cases, there isn't a, a stark difference between the coloring on the outside towards the outside rim of the of the dial and the center part of the dial so the more uniformity of color it also looks larger if this for instance say um let's look at the blue and let's say that the, that the uh the stadium chapter ring here above the edge of the dial were a very different color i, I don't know I, it doesn't matter uh, just even if it were just a darker blue than it is or maybe if you if they had some accent color that would mat that would that would complement this blue that would make the, the watch look smaller um, in terms of construction you're talking about the same level of quality of construction that all Vostok Europe's have this is surgical grade stainless steel uh, on the PVD you are talking about grade A PVD plating it doesn't matter what you spend on a watch you can't get better than grade A and this is true grade A PVD plating this also does have the fantastic strap work that you've come to enjoy on the Expedition collections uh, this is a triple layered strap these are actually three different pieces of leather you have the bottom leather and then you have these two uh, with double stitching or stitching on each side additional layers that are put above it and then the center line underneath in some cases that center line is actually a different color it doesn't happen to be on these particular executions with the nh35 that is the seiko nh35 automatic mechanical so that means that if you wear this watch every day you should never have to wind it um however if you put it on your dresser on friday you pick it up on monday a good 40 hours have passed more than 40 hours have passed and most likely the watch is not going to have any juice left in it and i always recommend that you do give it a good wind then um, because it may not pick up enough energy just from wearing it it is always best to give an automatic mechanical watch some winds after it has um, been sitting on the dresser and is no longer uh, keeping time 
this also has the K1 mineral crystal system. Uh, I'm actually showing you the K1 from the uh, larger, the 47, 40, 47, 48 millimeter version of the Expedition North Pole. Um, but it is the same crystal. It is off the hook how well made this crystal is. You're looking at a crystal that is four millimeters thick. That is the same thickness as it is on the 43 millimeter watch. Um, it is the K1 or Gorilla Glass system, which puts it firmly between sapphire and mineral. Uh, mineral on the, uh, if you look at it on the Mohs scale, the sapphire is nine on a Mohs scale. The mineral is five. The K1 or Gorilla Glass system is a seven that puts it right between there. So you get nearly the scratch resistance of sapphire and nearly the shatter resistance of mineral. It is important to point out mineral is more shatter resistant than sapphire. Sapphire is more scratch resistant. When you're talking about a sport watch, which is primarily what Vostok Europe builds, that is an important distinction because the K1 gives you really the best of both worlds. Um, I have definitely seen these watches when they've been after they've been tested in extreme conditions uh, where they have a really good chip in them. And I'm talking about when people are riding on the, are in the Dakar rally, are they're doing, are they cave diving, are they're doing something where you really had the chance of, of really smacking the watch. Um, if that had been a sapphire crystal, it would have shattered. Um, so that is the crystal system on this. I do always like to show, uh, well, first of all, for the, for the, for the charcoal, you have the brown strap, which really works well with this. Oh, and there is one other key difference be between these two: the uh, the numerals on the um, on the stainless version are a diff are a slightly lighter color than the ones on the black. You've got a little darker in the beige here in terms of the indicators and a little lighter on it in terms of the one on the stainless. So that actually adds to what I was talking about earlier, that the black PVD does tend to look darker and more stealthy in general. And the one on the stainless is a little bit lighter. Um, so it also is affected by the indicators on the watch. Um, so where was I? Uh, getting back to... Well, I lost my train of thought, but that's okay. Uh, 200 meter water resistant stainless steel case. Uh, and, and again, the crystal giving you the K1 mineral crystal system. Oh, I was talking about the straps. They both have the brown, which really, really pops really well, especially uh, when in combination with um, in combination with the indicators. And I also just noticed that the, and this is actually something I just realized, the uh that's the word I'm looking for. The surrounds or the edges on the indicators on the stainless are actually in yellow gold and the base on the hands is in yellow gold. Whereas on the black PVD, you also have black as the base on the indicator. So again, that adds to that overall look. And then on the stainless blue, you have the matching blue strap. I'd like to point out that we do have a couple of options on the site that would work really well with this. We have a black NATO, an all black NATO, and we have a NATO with a black and white. Um, I'm showing you here the options with the uh, black PVD. It's also available where the uh, keepers are all are in stainless steel. Um, in particular, the black and white really looks cool, in my opinion against the all black and black PVD version. So those are the core elements. Oh, I mentioned earlier, I wanted to talk about the fact that Vostok Europe is a boutique watch brand. And what does that really mean? Um, well, for me, um, I look at the watch world, setting aside the fact that you have, you know, dive watches, sport watches, dress watches, those kinds of things. There's really three categories. There's the micro brand world, uh, which we also have a brand, uh, Pramzius, that fits into that world. Those are very, very small brands that tend to sell a few hundred watches a year, at most a few thousand and they tend to sell direct to the public, would be referred to as a micro brand. Then you get to the boutique level of watches. Those are larger brands that are by no means household names, but they certainly are no longer small companies. I firmly put Vostok Europe in that category to give you a couple of other brands that might be comparable. Uh, well, obviously we carry Sturmansky, which I put in the same category as a boutique brand. Aviator is a boutique brand. Uh, some that we don't carry, Reactor or say Deep Blue, those would both be boutique brands. And then you get into the upper uh, level, or it's one of a better word. It's not really upper, it's just different. It's about name recognition. It's about marketing what we would refer to as call brands, which would be Seiko, Citizen, Bulova, Rolex, Tag Heuer, names that most people will know 
on the street, even if they're not watch people and don't know a lot about the history of those particular brands, they're going to be aware that that is a watch brand. So I kind of put it in those three categories. Uh, one other thing that I did want to mention just to give you a comparison, I'm happy to be showing you my Task Force Marauder here to give you a comparison of size uh, between the two models. You can see that they are exactly the same case and really the only difference between them, although this happens to be a quartz chronograph, the hybrid quartz uh, 6S21. Um, they are the same case, just a different size. So there you have it. That is the Expedition North Pole One Compact Edition from Vostok Europe. These are the three, uh, three of the NH35 versions. There's actually another NH35 version that I am not showing in this particular video. And then there are also the VK64 Mecha Quartz versions available in the Expedition North Pole One compact editions from Vostok Europe. These are now all currently in stock at r2awatches.com. I will tell you that these sell out fast when we get them, so you don't want to hesitate if you've been thinking about getting one. All righty. Well, thank you very much for joining us. I'm Craig Hester, and this has been the Vostok Europe Expedition North Pole 1 Compact Edition. And hey, until next time, keep watching.